The Alliance Alive opens in a world suffocated under heavy clouds and continuous rain. Two youngsters, Galil and Azura, inspired by the legends of a land with blue skies, set out on a fateful adventure, as is invariably the custom in traditional style RPGs. I did my best to keep big spoilers out of this video, but obviously some very minor ones will be present. Most of my footage is from the prologue and first few chapters. I want to focus on discussing a few aspects, such as the graphics, the menu and battle system, and the remastering in general. The prologue, which takes about one hour, is gripping and enchanting, and the title sequence is drenched in Masashi Hamauzu's beautiful lilting theme. First up, let's look at the background textures. Here you can see most clearly that the Alliance Alive originated from a very low resolution 3DS game. The jagged outlines and undefined landscape textures make this painfully obvious, especially on a large TV screen. This is one of several reasons why I would consider the Switch version the better option. In handheld mode, these shortcomings will simply not be quite as obvious. The character models, as you see, look sharp and appealing. On larger screens, however, you still notice those awkward, chunky, polygonal outlines. Does this detract from the gameplay and enjoyment? I don't think so, as long as the story is engaging and dialogue characters and battles are interesting. On the whole, I think Furyu have done a good job with the awkward HD upscaling. Where I think they have left a big black hole is where some voice acting should be. You really notice the mouth movements and no vocal sounds. It would have added so much flavour to the whole experience. It's a shame they were on such a tight budget, apparently. 
The story is very linear so far, and your party members are fixed in the beginning. I was surprised at the low combat difficulty, especially as you're given a beefy tank type in each of the two party setups I've had so far. My greatest problem was actually trying to avoid enemies on the map. They move extremely fast and you don't want to be ambushed from behind. I found that I quickly became almost OP due to all the random encounters. Since good items are hard to come by, I tried to find every chest and orb, and that contributed to the problem. You can very easily run into enemies that are far above your level of skill, as early as Chapter 2. And in Chapter 3, you may offer yourself as a sacrifice to the Hippo Hippocampus Water Devil. I was wiped out ruthlessly the first time I bumped into one. Unfortunately, stubborn as I am, I decided to attempt to conquer one. The boost this gave me made me far too strong for the regular mobs, and I recommend not taking on those special enemies too early. The hippocampus you see here was my second or third, which explains why I could defeat him fairly easily. The battle system, as I already mentioned in my companion video, is reminiscent of the Saga games, with skills being unlocked and levelling up during combat. The setup reminds me a lot of Legend of Legacy, which is no bad thing. It's not overly complex and easy to come to grips with. One improvement is how formations are handled in this game. In Legend of Legacy, you had to select your stance each time at the start of battle, and that became rather tiresome. You have one super move called Final Strike, which triggers when you enter ignition mode. It's very powerful and can get you out of a tight spot or finish a boss fight. But the price is that your weapon is broken. You can get broken weapons repaired, as from Chapter 7 at the Guild. You don't want to be caught, though, out in the field without a vital weapon to equip, so I got into the habit of purchasing spare duplicate weapons. They are fortunately not expensive. My other minor problem at first was that I couldn't distinguish which weapon was broken and which not. I was sitting at a distance from the TV, and it was only once I moved closer that I spotted the small red marker indicating the broken state. It's much easier to spot in the item menu. For you decided to break the skill system up into two components in the menu. You can check all your acquired skills, called Arts and Spells, and these are the ones that are awakened during combat and then added to your combat menu choice. In addition, there is a Talents menu where you can invest points earned through battle into strengthening what are passive skills or buffs associated with your equipment. As you can see, the cost escalates rather quickly beyond the second level, and at this stage I am a bit disheartened how I'm going to amass enough points to afford some of those levels. I can only assume that there will be enough opportunity and increased points later in the game, otherwise my OCD will be severely tested. 
Now, talking about what expectations I have for the game going forward, beyond the initial eight chapters I have played, I anticipate that the world will open up significantly and provide extra quests and exploration. The part of the map I've seen and explored so far appears to be only a small chunk of what may turn out a vast world map. I hope so. I also hope that the story will deepen and concentrate dramatic impetus towards the end. The story so far is good, but not overly surprising if you are familiar with classic RPG narratives. All this and more I will discuss once I finish the game and can give my final impressions. I'll leave you with two tips, rather obvious ones, but sometimes we don't see what's right in front of our noses. I remember the quick save system from Legend of Legacy. It is excellent. You can save anywhere, anytime, with just a press of a button combo. The same applies to the Alliance Alive. Unlike some games which design the quick save only for when you want to close the game, here it is just that, a quick way of saving that continually overwrites the same file and you can pick this up from the title screen's continue option. The second pleasant surprise was the flee option when you're defeated in battle. It is very, very forgiving. You rematerialize, the enemy is gone, and you can still get at that chest you were intent on plundering. Again, we see how the game doesn't really set out to punish mistakes severely or make combat a drudgery. I get a strong sense that the developers want us players, first and foremost, to enjoy our time in this world. Thank you for watching. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye bye.